Est-ce que moi-même, je suis arrivé d'un coup comme ça avec la personnalité là, euh, avec ma personnalité, etc. Euh, parce que je dis souvent, on se type, on se type à l'envers, etc. Est-ce que moi aussi, je suis passé par là En réalité, euh, oui. Pas totalement, mais j'ai eu un, un parcours plutôt classique en fait, qui est ni trop exagéré, ni trop euh, parfait, ou directement je suis arrivé avec la bonne personnalité. Donc c'est avec la vidéo là que j'ai découvert en fait euh, le test du MBTI, etc. J'ai trouvé la vidéo de Squeezy Cool, je me dis, oh, trop cool, faire un, un, un test de personnalité, tout le monde a envie d'aller voir. Du coup, je suis parti voir, j'ai fait le, euh, le test de 16 personalities. Et effectivement, euh, j'ai eu un résultat qui était tellement, qui me ressent, enfin, qui était tellement moi quand j'ai lu. Et je vous jure, quand j'ai lu, j'étais là, je me disais, mais comment ils savent C'est un truc de ouf, en fait. Euh, J'avais eu la personnalité INTP-T. INTP-T, INTP-A, j'ai jamais compris vraiment à quoi est-ce que ça correspondait. Peu importe, on s'en fout, ça n'a aucune, aucune importance ni, euh, ni pertinence. Et vraiment, quand j'ai lu, je vous jure... J'avais l'impression qu'on m'avait espionné, en fait. J'avais l'impression que c'était... Enfin, bref, c'était exactement moi. J'étais persuadé, je suis un INTP, c'est sûr, à 100%, à 100%, etc. J'en avais ensuite parlé sur, sur, sur ma chaîne, même, parce que j'avais déjà une chaîne à l'époque. Bonjour, mon ami, ici Pierrick, et au Et régulièrement sur cette chaîne, je poste une vidéo pour aider les jeunes gens intelligents à adopter le bon état d'esprit. Aujourd'hui, j'aimerais te parler d'un site que j'ai découvert il n'y a pas longtemps, qui s'appelle 16... Enfin, ah non, euh, 16 Personalities. C'est un test de personnalité. Je ne me suis pas trop renseigné sur, sur, sur la science exacte derrière tout ça. Et je l'ai fait. J'ai répondu aux questions, etc. Et ça m'a donné euh, la personnalité INTP-T. Et vraiment, j'ai lu ma description et c'était incroyable. C'était incroyable de précision. Ça me correspondait vraiment très précisément. C'était vraiment... Enfin, j'étais vraiment... Mais quand j'ai lu, je me suis dit, mais wesh <rire> Comment, comment ils peuvent savoir, tu vois C'était vraiment super précis et ça m'a trop trop bien décrit. Donc évidemment, tout de suite, je me suis dit, hm, certainement euh, un effet Barnum. Et du coup, je me suis... Euh, un effet Barnum, pardon. C'est en fait quelque chose qui fait que euh, tu te reconnais dans une description. Alors qu'en fait, c'est quelque chose de très général. C'est quelque chose qui, qui décrit à peu près tout le monde, en fait, et dans lequel tout le monde peut se reconnaître. Et je me suis beaucoup renseigné dessus parce que je me suis dit, waouh, genre... L'effet que ça m'avait fait, genre je, 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 je trouve ça vraiment mais super, super, super incroyable. J'avais jamais eu l'impression d'avoir été autant compris, etc. Je me dis, mais c'est un truc de ouf, tu vois. Et j'avais du coup acheté leur, leur livre à 16 personnalities, 16 personalities. Ils ont un, lise, un livre, en fait, quand tu passes le test, pour chacune des personnalités, tu peux ensuite acheter leur livre qui, qui fait pas mal de pages et qui a un, un, une description premium, voilà un profil premier, premium de ta personnalité, les logiciens, donc les INTP. Et ce livre numérique est vraiment le meilleur livre de l'impression personnel que j'ai pu lire jusqu'à aujourd'hui. Moi, j'ai eu de la chance, j'ai eu le bon résultat du premier coup. Et quand j'ai lu, je me suis dit, mais what Comment est-ce qu'ils savent, tu vois En vrai. Ok, donc voilà, donc je disais donc, que j'avais lu euh, le livre. Et effectivement, donc du coup, j'étais vraiment euh, euh, obsédé par ça et vraiment tout. Genre, je passais pas une seule journée sans chercher à me renseigner sur, sur les personnalités, sans aller lire sur des sites, l'entre de la chouette, etc. Fiche de personnalité. C'était surtout ça, les sites euh, que je voyais souvent, la chaîne de, de Psychoscan. Pendant tout ce temps-là, je pensais être un INTP, c'est le résultat que j'avais obtenu et qui m'avait correspond. Enfin, qui me, et qui me correspondait le mieux. J'avais même fait du coup à l'époque la vidéo là. Quand j'ai fait la vidéo là, je m'y connaissais vraiment beaucoup plus sur le MBTI. J'avais les codes, je savais à peu près c'était quoi les personnalités, machin. Tu vois. Je me souviens que quand j'ai fait la vidéo là, il me semble que j'étais déjà un peu moins sûr d'être un INTP. Euh, mais je me disais de toute façon, ça fait plus de clics. Donc autant faire INTP. Et j'avais vu en plus une liste de choses que les INTP n'aimaient pas, etc. Et j'avais ensuite ajouté, euh, ajouté moi-même ce que je savais des INTP. Mais effectivement, à cette période-là, déjà, je commençais à me demander est-ce que je suis vraiment un INTP ou un ENTP Parce que aussi, quand j'ai vraiment été obsédé par euh, le test, etc., et que je le faisais passer à tous mes amis, euh, des amis me demandaient c'était quoi ma, ma personnalité. Moi, je disais INTP. Ils me disaient, ah, mais du coup, tu es introverti. Et les gens, ils ne me voyaient pas trop comme étant introverti. Et c'est vrai que à l'école, etc., j'avais toujours tendance à être... Euh, à être euh, pas le cancre, mais euh, genre celui qui fait des blagues en cours, etc. Du coup, on me demandait, ah bon, t'es un, un INTP, etc. Et j'ai trouvé ça bizarre, et moi-même, je voyais que les descriptions des INTP me correspondaient mieux, sur le site en tout cas, mais je voyais même dans mes recherches, etc., même dans les mêmes, et c'était surtout ça, les mêmes sur les ENTP, euh, avocat du diable, euh, troll, etc., ça me correspondait trois fois plus que euh, les mêmes sur les INTP euh, 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 associables, robots, etc. Tu vois, même si je me considère même comme un robot, tu as tous les TI, tous les NTP, tu as surtout qui ont TI masculin et SI dans leur fonction. Euh, 
quelque part, ils vont se voir comme étant des robots. Suite à ce que je savais du coup des personnalités, parce qu'à un moment, je m'y connaissais beaucoup plus sur le sujet, donc je voyais hmm, que déjà, le MBTI classique était un peu flou et pas clair, et qu'est-ce qu'il raconte, tu vois Parce que INTP, ENTP, c'était quasiment impossible de différencier les deux, à part introverti et extraverti, qui ne voulaient en fait rien dire. Et quand on essaie vraiment de creuser dans le MBTI classique, on se rend vite compte qu'en fait, mais genre, mais genre comment ça marche enfin, Genre de quoi tu parles Comment est-ce qu'on fait pour savoir objectivement qui est quoi Tu vois, ça manquait vraiment de structure. Donc ensuite, fait, je passais beaucoup de tests pour savoir ce que j'étais un E ou un INTP. Je me, je me rendais compte effectivement que j'étais un ENTP. Le test là, j'avais eu ENTP. Et j'avais lu surtout, une fois, sur un site de Ruff, je ne sais plus où, j'avais lu que la plupart des gens qui se demandent est-ce que ce sont des ENTP ou des INTP, en général, ce sont des ENTP. Parce que les vrais INTP, ils ne se demandent pas est-ce que ce sont des ENTP, en fait. Et ce sont soit les ENTP qui ont l'impression d'être des INTP, alors que les INTP, ils n'ont pas spécialement l'impression d'être des ENTP. Et ça m'avait beaucoup marqué. Je me suis dit, ah, ok, donc c'est certainement que tu es un ENTP, etc. J'avais accepté, du coup, que j'étais un ENTP, même si, même encore aujourd'hui, hein, la définition des INTP sur le site 16, pers 16 Personalities me correspond toujours beaucoup plus que la description des ENTP euh, sur, sur ce même site. Mais sur tous les autres sites, les ENTP me correspondaient beaucoup plus. Et après, donc, finalement, j'ai fini par découvrir, du coup, Objective Personality, qui m'ont fait revoir totalement le MBTI, qui m'ont permis de comprendre vraiment, genre, qui ont justement apporté tout ce que le MBTI classique, tout ce dont le MBTI classique manque, c'est-à-dire une structure logique, pas tous ces, tous ces blabla qui, qui te décrivaient 3000 comportements, tu vois, sans jamais te dire, oui, mais du coup, genre, oui, mais il y a, genre, il y a plein de gens qui ont ces comportements-là, mais ce n'est pas pour autant que... Genre, je voyais que j'avais certains comportements des, des, des FE, mais je savais très bien que je n'étais pas un FE. Tu vois, je me dis, mais genre, comment ça marche vraiment, en fait Objective Personality, c'est vraiment ça qu'ils ont apporté. J'ai découvert, du coup, leur chaîne. Je me dis, ah, super, etc. Et du coup, j'ai commencé à en apprendre beaucoup plus sur le fait qu'on se type souvent très, très mal, sur le fait d'être beaucoup plus... Euh, de faire toujours attention avec ce qu'on pense de, de nous-mêmes par rapport à nos personnalités, sur le fait qu'on est totalement inconscient de nos fonctions dominantes, sur le, sur le concept même des fonctions dominantes, après sur les modes, etc. etc. Genre tous les trucs dont on parle avec le BTI efficace, c'est là en fait que j'ai vraiment compris. Et du coup, je savais déjà que j'étais un ENTP, mais du coup, décideur-observateur, là, ok, dès que j'ai compris qu'est-ce que c'était la différence entre décideur et observateur, clairement, j'étais pas un décideur, tu vois. Je suis clairement pas un décideur, ENTP, c'était sûr. Mais ensuite, j'ai beaucoup, j'ai mis pas mal de temps pour voir tous les autres trucs. Donc, du coup, FE féminin, ça, j'ai aussi vu très très vite. TI masculin, j'ai vu très très vite. Je me souviens plus, en fait, comment est-ce que ça s'est passé exactement pour le, pour le reste. Mais quand j'ai fait ce décodage-là... Bien le bonjour, mon ami. Bonjour. Quand j'ai fait ce décodage-là, euh, effectivement, j'étais déjà noté, Pierre et Kia, euh, avec la personnalité que j'ai. Et c'est ça, c'était il y a très longtemps. C'est un, un décodage qui date d'il y a très longtemps. Qui... C'est un décodage qui est très très vieux euh, et j'avais déjà la, perso la personnalité là. À partir de là, je ne pourrais plus vraiment dire à partir de quand est-ce que j'ai su. Le truc qui m'a le plus fait douter au final, c'est vraiment mode sommeil. À la fin, je me demandais est-ce que j'ai un mode sommeil ou est-ce que j'ai un mode répand Parce que depuis très jeune, je faisais des vidéos où j'expliquais des trucs aux gens. Tu vois, J'avais les comportements des modes répand. Et du coup, je, je me demandais est-ce que j'avais vraiment un mode répand et ça, pendant très longtemps, le doute-là a persisté, 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 persisté pendant très longtemps. Quand j'ai vraiment compris vraiment bien c'est quoi la différence entre dominant énergie et dominant information, je me suis rendu compte que j'étais clairement un dominant énergie, que j'étais clairement pas un dominant information, que j'étais pas hypnomachie, etc. Tu vois. Tous les dominants informations super universitaires, tous les... Euh, comment ils s'appellent euh, Idriss Aberkan, etc. Tu vois. Je suis clairement pas ça. Je voyais sur ce plan-là que j'étais pas un dominant information. Je me souviens plus exactement à partir de quand est-ce que j'ai pu écrire, voilà, Pirekia avec la personnalité là en dessous, mais je ne me souviens jamais d'avoir écrit quelque chose d'autre. Je, je n'ai jamais de souvenir justement visuel, euh, sensation féminine, de Pierrickia avec écrit un, avec, avec écrit une autre personnalité en dessous de mon prénom en fait. Voilà toute mon histoire en tout cas avec mon typage euh, du moment où j'ai découvert donc le MBTI. Euh, avec, euh, euh, grâce à la vidéo de Squeezie jusqu'à euh, le point final où vraiment euh, je me suis dit bon enfin parce que même à un moment en fait je savais mais je, je continuais à NE masculin tu vois je n'arrivais pas à faire fermer toutes les possibilités ah mais peut-être qu'en fait je suis ci peut-être qu'en fait tu es ça tu vois du coup oui donc j'ai pas fait donc j'ai passé le test avec, euh, avec objectif personnalité etc pour justement avoir une source extérieure euh, ils ont trouvé exactement pareil double féminin NETI machin 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 
Il y a le lien dans, dans la description si vous voulez aller voir euh, ce qu'ils ont, ce qu'ils font aussi des audios. Euh, ils disaient, enfin, pour, enfin, vous pouvez aller écouter. Euh, ils ont dit effectivement que j'ai l'air d'avoir un mode répand, mais que je suis clairement dominant en formation. Enfin, bref, exactement comme moi, en fait, exactement ce que, ce que, ce que je voyais aussi. Euh, et que oui, j'ai appris en fait à avoir un mode répand parce que je fais des vidéos euh, où j'explique des trucs depuis que je suis au lycée, tu vois. Donc, voilà, les amis. Euh, c'était du coup toute mon histoire avec ma personnalité du début à la fin là j'ai vraiment fait la chronologie complète je n'ai rien euh, euh, mis de côté puis, et puis c'est tout tout simplement merci à vous, prenez soin de vous et on se dit à très bientôt, au revoir well look at that I don't know what to say <laughs> uh, you got your type right on at least that's what I got and Shani got the same thing Definitely seeing EP. Yep. Definitely seeing abstract, chaos, crazy mind all over the place. Yep. Definitely seeing TI, logic talking to self all fucking day long. Yep. Um, seeing play. Yep. Loves to engage and share and bounce back and forth with the tribe. Um, and then seeing blast last, you know. Um, you, you, you are very good at blasting. That took me a while, but um, you know, you're very good at blasting. But then also seeing that, yeah, you're more energy dominant as well as your blast does seem to be something that you've kind of learned and trained and pushed yourself to do. Uh, because that uh, the um, sleep energy as well as, well as the goofy play, um, you know, have a fun time, uh, joke around, you know, energy dominant was sneaking through. So I'm like, okay, consume, play, sleep. And then I'm like, okay, is this guy audio? And then I'm like, he's too shovy on the intuition. He's he's like double, triple down on that fucking NE. Fuck you, sensory, all in. I'm going all in on intuition. I'm like, that's fucking masculine intuition. The feminine NE backs off a little bit. It's staying grounded to the masculine SI facts. And so I'm like, shit, I think this guy's double feminine NETI. What the hell type did he type himself again? And I'm like, <laughs> there it is. So uh, congratulations, you, you won the prize, you got yourself right on. We're not seeing that as much as we used to. We, we, we saw um, at the very beginning, nobody would get themselves even close. Then we went through, I'd say about a year ago, we had a good run of quite a few people were getting themselves pretty darn close on or right on. And now it's gone the other way. Now everybody's all fucked up. They're all upside down backwards. We think we're getting kind of a lot of... Um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of the uh, the public or people from Facebook, you know, uh, I, I don't know, just a lot of people have been more off recently than on. So it's it's great to see that you got yourself typed so damn right on. Um, also really great, man, to know that you're 21. Yes, you do look older than 21. Um, the biggest thing, man, like when I'm trying to get to know somebody, I'm just like, okay, like what chapter in life are you in? Because it's, it's so much context, right? So it's like, If you have the kind of struggles or things you're going through now and you're 35, I'm like, eh, you're kind of a shithead, right? But if you're like 21, I'm like, holy shit, you're way ahead of the game. The fact that you're like jumping in, you're doing a website, you're doing a business service, you're diving in, like you're fucking throwing shit at the wall. You're getting moving. You know, you're not stuck in some basement somewhere doing nothing, waiting for perfection before you get going. Um, you know, knowing statistically Whatever you're doing now at 21 is not going to be exactly what you're going to be doing when you're 31, you know, but like it takes so much time to try different things and let that evolve over time. Because what all the successful people are saying, they're like, yeah, I ended up here. That's not where I started. I did this job, which then led me to this, which led me to this. I burned that down. I learned this lesson. I went to here to there, right? <clears throat> I know that's been the case for me, you know, and so I know for a lot of people that are blast last, they'll get stuck. So I think it's fucking great, man, that you're fucking moving and you're doing shit, you know? So, um, <laughs> yeah, you're 21. You're just so ahead of the game, you know? Uh, really good. So I don't know what else to fucking tell you. I don't have to, like, argue with you or convince you of your type. Thank fucking God. I fucking hate arguing with these goddamn, t <laughs> these goddamn TIs. Um, I can share with you what Shani and I have been really kind of processing and learning a lot this past week or two. We've been... Uh, kind of going over the checklist of the parts and stuff and um, trying to trying to get the coins down better, a better understanding, like what exactly is sensing versus intuition, right? So that has been the one this week we've been getting a lot of personal breakthrough and you'll see us talk about it in, in future videos in a couple months, you know, but what we're seeing with sensing and intuition, so let me go over that one first because you're savior, intuitive, so am I. And, and we're like, yay, I'm intuitive. Like, ah, 
kind of like it seems to be, you know, analogies here, like trying to catch myself every five seconds. It seems to be a tortoise and the hare thing. The intuitive is the tortoise. So we are fucking kick ass on the fucking front end, motherfucker. It's like, get it, got it, understand it. I see what's going on. I can connect it. And it's just really, really fun. It's so fun, especially NE. It's faster than NI to be like, I get what's going on here. I understand it, right? Um, For example, so now I'm switching over to sensory. Let me back up that overview let me back up that summary that concept with some fucking facts right I'm, I'm, I'm learning to double observe here let me lay out some sensory for example uh when we hire people to work on the website we see pretty consistently the ones that are intuitive dominant especially intuitive at the top like we just had a guy work on his nefi and uh they they're they're so fucking awesome on the front end oh i understand yes i understand what you need Oh, I can totally do that. Oh, I know what kind of code that is. I know how all that works. And then how, go ahead and take a guess. How does it work a week later by the time they're done doing the work? They forgot a comma. They can't get the thing to work. Uh, the spacing is off. The auto timer doesn't work. Like it, like their sensory just falls the fuck apart, especially if they're any FI because like they're, they're lacking the T to actually make it work or get it done. Um, and so the intuitive dominance uh, as well as like a lot of different INTJs we've worked with in the RC business. Uh, we just fucking won't go near them anymore when it comes to website code. If they're lead NI or lead NE, like just unless they are a proven really good person that's grown, which we've just haven't seen, they're just fucking shitheads when it comes to actually building a website that can sustainably work over time. That's what they're, none of them are thinking. Like, hey, asshole. I might actually have to fucking use this thing three years from now. So is this code going to hold up? Can we update this? Are you going to be around? Is this put in right? Like, they're like, what? I got it to work, you know, for two days to convince you to pay me and give me a review. I'm out of here, you know? So it just doesn't work in real life. You know, the people that have been the best to work with are like T-I-S-E. You know, we got this one guy we've met. He's T-I-S-E, consume sleep. So he's relative balance with the S in the N, you know? Um, and, and so the, the, the TI is like fucking, Hey man, like they make it goddamn work. You know, the TI is going to figure it out, make it work. Um, their identity is tied to, I want this to work. I want the truth. Right. And then their sensory is tied to grounding of, I can actually lay out the pages. I can see the commas. I don't have fucking dyslexia and I can get the website to actually, uh, function in reality, you know? So what I'm doing right there is I'm, I'm attempting to double observe where I'm giving the concept at the beginning where I'm like, intuition is like the tortoise and the hare, right? Where, where the tortoise is, you know, all cool at the beginning and then, you know, fuck you at the back end. And then I'm trying to give specific examples of where that's actually happened in real life using our website people. And as you've noticed, as I'm telling the story of the website people, you're like, yeah, I got it. Hurry up. I, what's next, right? And so I'm seeing that that's what sensors are doing is they are very boring to listen to because they're like so eight ounces of water that's what i call it like like um like like what do i do to get healthy take a cup that is at least eight ounces high and fill the cup with water fill it to the eight ounce limit mark now drink the cup you're like oh my god are you fucking spelling all this out like why the fuck do you guys talk that way you know and i'm seeing what they're doing because when i'm like asking shani like what what are you doing as sensory why why are we in conversations and you have to like spell things out so much and 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 tell a story so literally uh, which i'm not even doing right now like if i was sensory i would i would stop and say for example today shani and i were downstairs in the kitchen and she was sitting in the chair and i was standing on the counter and then we were talking about um, Michael with the website. And then Michael's, and then I'm going to like tell the whole story in sensory and you're going to shoot yourself in the head because you're like, I don't fucking care. Get to the point, right? And so so that's the negative of sensory, which you and I know because we're awesome and we're intuitive, right? But the problem is on the back end with the tortoise and the hare example is like that you and I will figure out concepts, figure out understandings, and we will say the punchline of the movie or, or the, the lesson so fast that nobody gets it. Nobody can carry away. You know, they, they, they can't take it away, you know? I, an analogy again, because I'm a fucking crack addict to analogies. It reminds me of, 
That's another thing intuition is constantly doing. Oh, it reminds me of this. Um, it reminds me of the the pickup artists talking to the high school kids about dating, right? So they try and explain to the guys, they're like, look, you can't just run up to the girl and say, hey, let's have sex. Because the girl's perspective is like, yeah, I know we could have sex. I know we can do that. I, I know we can run to the end of the movie and see how this ends. Because the girl already knows how this is going to end. It's going to end with them having sex if that's what she wants. Then the girl's perspective is, can we take some fucking time to build up to that, you douchebag, dumbass piece of shit, right? And so the guys are like, oh, I never thought about that. Like, be your friend, make you laugh, take you out to dinner, go for a walk, uh, go see your cat. Like, let's fucking enjoy the process before we get to the fucking conclusion, right? So that is where I'm like, oh, I'm starting to get it. That's where I'm screwing shit up as intuitive dominance. And you'll see this on the videos I do all day long where I'll just like blast the end concept. Ta-da, I know how this works. I know the ending. Here's the end concept. Now, you might think it's great because you're NE, right? So what the fuck do you care? But like everybody else is like, why should I believe that? How did you lead up to that? Where is your facts? Where's your track records? Where's your breadcrumbs? Can you give me an example? Can you give me another example? Did that really happen? Because they're like, I actually want to enjoy the process of leading up to that conclusion so I can own that whole experience for myself. You know, um, it feels very much like a movie analogy again, right? Is, is like, I, I could, I could tell you about my favorite movie. I could tell you about the Fury movie with Brad Pitt. I can sit here for two hours and tell you about it um, or, or give you a quick summary about it or have you watch the movie trailer. But really, you've got to go sit down and watch the two-hour movie your fucking self. And now you'll be downloading that true experience. I could give you the bottom line. I can tell you the end. The end is they all die except for the kid and the kid's a hero. And, and you know, Brad Pitt, I could, I could give you the ending. Ta-da! But like, no, that that's wrecking the movie. You want to experience the buildup to the end of the movie, you know? So this is what you and I are doing as intuitives that are fucking over our audience. You know, when, when we're, we're, we're having a back and forth with a person, we're that douchebag that's just running to the end of the movie or we're just saying, hey, let's have sex right now. And everyone else is like, fuckhead, could you, could you spell it out a little bit? Could you enjoy the process? Um, and that's going on, I'm seeing in the S and the F. And because the, the T's are fucking this up too. So this is where you're like, this is where like your double fuck up. You know, I got to give you some insults because you fucking got your type right on. So you're doing good. You know, double the cider. Right? I got to knock you down a little bit, right? So it's like, this is where the, 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 intuit, the intuition is doing that by just rushing the process. Um, let me just close on that or let me close up that little chapter there. So it's like what I'm trying to do in my life now is I'm trying to learn how to double observe, like, like say, for example, um, uh, uh, Andrew Fauci, you know, the coronavirus guy. He's an INTP, N-E-S-I in the middle, but he's intuitive dominant. So he's very good at going, all right, here's the concept. Here's the bottom line. It's going to be a dark winter. Uh, we're going to make it through this. So he'll start with the generality, with the overview, with the abstract first. Great. Love it. I can do that. Then he gives a lot of sensory to back it up. Bam. Guy's fucking nailing it, right? As a presenter, fucking nailing it gives the abstract overview, thank you, now I know what the hell we're talking about, then backs up a sensory, everyone's fucking happy with the presentation of the information, right? If you if you talk that way with any and SI in the middle like that, right? So I'm, I'm using him as an example of like, I want to be the type of person that rolls into a conversation. Of course, I'm going to lead with the big picture first because I'm end dominant. But then I want to say, for example, and then I want to give the sensory because I'll just fucking forget to do that, right? So that's what I'm learning with the with the N versus S. And um, cause right, man, the 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 true thing of growth is where you see N E as kind of negative and S I as the hero. You know, that's growth. Where you're like, fuck, this N E is kind of bullshitty. It's kind of just running me in circles. It's kind of just abstract shit and I'm all alone and I'm a fucking hero genius, but nobody gets it. That's that's coming from my N E. Fuck that thing. I want to balance that with SI. I want to respect SI, right? And that's the hero's journey where you start to hate the savior a little bit and actually love the demon. And therefore you can start to bring the balance, right? 
Um, so that's what I'm learning there. Um, and then the second one is the T versus the F. Now me as savior feeler, I can see that one a little bit easier. So for example, with the thinkers, uh, excuse me, the thinkers, they're like, let's just get it done. Let's just make it happen. So like, say for me and Shani, for example, with her as a thinker, what I'll see her doing, because she's watching me fuck up all day long on the intuition sensing thing, right? Um, and then I'm watching her on the thinking things. She'll just be like, let's just go get this done. Let's just solve this. Let's just fire it out. Or like, okay. Uh, but we just had a yelling match and everybody's kind of hurt right now. And everybody's feelings are not in a good place. So we could go get the thing done. Yay, we got the stupid dumbass fucking thing done. But everybody feels like shit. And we're just going to feel bad tomorrow and not be able to get the thing done again because everybody feels like shit. So can we slow the fuck down, not just get the thing done and actually take some time to care about the emotions? And now I sound like a fucking savior F.E., you know, so it's like F.E.S.I. are going to be your demons like the the SFJs are your fucking heroes, right? The SFJs are going to be the opposite of you. They're going to be like, hey, shithead, hey, smart guy running 100 miles an hour. I understand. Got it done. I understand. Got it done. Yeah, for yourself. Right. And the SFJs, you'd be like, hey, dumb, dumb. Let's spell this out. Let's do a line by line. And let's go real slow because somebody just got scared. Somebody just got intimidated. Somebody feels nervous. Let's go back. Not talk about the fucking thing. Not talk about the T. And let's just process how they're feeling. So we can get their emotions back on a positive state so they can get back to learning. And you're going to fucking shoot yourself because you're going to be like, I can't go that slow. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. You're the fucking rabbit. You can't go that fucking slow, can you? Right? And that's what the crashes are for everybody of your type is you guys run so fucking fast over the surface of the water that, you know, by the time you're 40, you're burnt out, lonely, alcoholic, nobody likes you, smartest guy in the world, right? And that's the fucking crash of the the ENTP. (laughs) And then until... um. Like um, um, Bill Nye, right? Bill Nye, the science guy. He's an INTP, T-I-S-I. And he's really learned like, fuck, if I sit here and I just nerd out with the NT shit all day long, I ain't going nowhere. I'm just banging my head against the wall. People are not fucking getting it. That guy, I don't know how or why he figured this out, but he figured out his demons of like, I got to do a goddamn puppet show. I got to make this funny and SF engaging, you know, move towards his demon side or whatever. He's responsible for the feeling right? Fucking A, what an unlock, you know? Um, that's what we're seeing with a lot of the alphas that we're, we're finding is, is the, the NETI guy that has discovered the importance of going slow with the sensory and engaging people emotionally, you know? Um, um, so yeah, let's see. I think, I think that's pretty much it as I'm like, <laughs> you know, speaking of, you know, not communicating very well and being all over the place. Um, it's just really hard, you know, it's, it's really hard. So the, the same with the, the thinking and the feeling, it's just going to be, um, f- for me, it's just like, like watching the FEs and going, what are they doing that is right that I'm not doing, you know, cause it's easy to be like, oh, that's annoying. You're right. But it's like, okay, what, what are they doing that I'm not doing? And what they are doing is, is the FEs are doing this where they're, they're going slow to make sure everybody is in a good, positive emotional state so their brains can actually keep working. You know, then obviously they're having tons of problems at the back end because they can't team make it work, whatever. But that's their fucking problem. Let them deal with their balance, you know. I'm just trying to steal what works from that type that I can apply to balance out my growth because I want to be the type of person that 10 years from now I can double observe very clearly where I can have line-by-line sensory to back up all these patterns that I'm talking about, Right. Um, and then I want to be able to get my emotions and my logic a little more balanced, um, where I can, I can be moving the audience in the right emotional state. You know, it's something I'm, I'm constantly trying to hone in, like when to do a joke, when to punch, when to be aggressive, when to be funny, um, uh, you know, when to be more loving, but then also like, okay, help them on, like, we can get this to work. We can make this all work together. You know, anyways, that's been kind of a, a insight and discovery that we've had. I know that you're an EP. You've heard this kind of shit before. So fast forward onto the new next thing. But um, so much of this for us has just been kind of going over the same information more and more. It feels like every few months um, I'm I'm seeing and discovering one of these coins in a deeper way. It was uh, uh, over the summer I was seeing FE a lot deeper. 
uh, seeing a lot in our personal lives and seeing it in other people and seeing the value of FE. And now it's, this week, it's like we've rediscovered fucking sensing versus intuition, like old school Myers, Myers-Briggs letters, like all over again at a, at a deeper uh, rate to the point of where it's like it's hitting in deep enough where it's like, all right, how can I start making some of these changes and adaptations and growth in my own thought processes and my own language? And how can I watch myself so I can double observe more and give more sensory Um you know, getting my savers on board with my NI is like, oh my God, it would be so efficient if I could speak with more sensory. You know, that's that's been the unlock is like when the savior sees the value, the savior sees the importance of the demon and then the savior wants to bring that demon up, that's when that works. You know, because if you're NE and TI are, are at the point where they're like, SI and FE are dumb. Like, oh, well then you have quite a few more years to burn yourself out until they can ground down and, and see the value of that, which probably like, you're 21, like you should be on savior crack for quite a few years. And and it's not that you don't do that, right? I think it's just like naturally over time that you will get to the point where you'll start to get sick of your savers and see them all the time. I don't think that's something you necessarily want to do at 21. Again, back to the movie analogy, just because you know how alphas turn out doesn't mean you're an alpha at 22. You know what I mean? Like, um, part of the hero's journey is like the the person has to be drunk on their saviors. And that's why we're seeing most alphas are flipping over in their late forties or fifties because they have to have enough decades of I'm just drunk, sick and disgusted with my saviors. Right. But I think a person still has to build up their saviors. They still like, what do you got? Like, how good is your NETI? Let's fucking see it. What do you got? You know? So a person that young kid has still got to go out and prove themselves you know, so I, I guess what I'm saying, because it's it's a weird situation that you're so young and you have so much consciousness, you know, I I would think that you still do what you're doing. And that is be a dumbass kid and, and just crank up the NETI. Right. And let that run itself out because time will eventually start to corner you and you will feel trapped and stuck and alone and everybody will hate you like that will eventually come in your late 20s or whenever. And it's just at that intersection, that intersection, when that actually starts to happen, when you build your saviors way, way, way up, then you're like, okay, I know what this is in the movie. I know this step. I don't need to feel stuck or trapped for 10 years where a lot of people waste a lot of time. This is where I've now gotten enough strength and enough experience in my saviors that they've gotten so big that they're actually causing these real tidal waves. Now's the time that I can start moving over and really balancing out the S with the SI and the FE, you know, it feels just like a, a bodybuilder, like go ahead, build up your upper body, get it towards massive. And you start having body pains and then start working out your legs and get it balanced. You know, like it just, it's just a very sloppy way. That just seems to be the way that it happens. You've got to build up your savers to a ridiculous amount, have the breakdown and then start building up the demons. By the time you're fucking 50, if you're ahead of things, you're going to be doing great. You know, um, and I guess what I'm just trying to communicate, you know, again, I'm I'm not double observing here very well. I'll start tomorrow. Is uh, just not putting yourself under the type of pressure that a 40 year old is under, even though you have the consciousness of a 70 year old with this self help and code and knowing everybody else. You know what I'm saying? I think you do. I know you do. I know. I know you got to figure it out. Um, just. Um, yeah, man, because just last thing, because, you know, jumping over to the F here, the feeling side, like sometimes it gets hard, you know, it gets hard, it gets lonely. Um, I think it's really challenging being a young person in today with the massive amount of consciousness, and it's hard to build up the responsibility and the strength to back up everything you fucking know. When I was younger, without the internet and being consumed last, things weren't so hard because I wasn't aware of much. So life was pretty easy. It's pretty simple. Ignorance is bliss, you know? Um, so just giving yourself the patience to to be a kid, to be a person in their 20, uh, in their twenties. Um, last random blaster point for you and me following the tribe is going to be a demon because you, you and I are not going to want to hear from other people because you, you, you're the authority of yourself, TI, right? Um, this is where like following Gary V and, and, and your five to 10 heroes of like seeing the patterns of, okay, what's, what have they been through? Um, time-wise, where were they in their twenties? Where were they in their thirties? And therefore, you don't feel so alone. You're like, oh, I'm at this spot in 21 or 25 years old. I'm feeling this way. Okay, that's normal. Well, how do you know? Well, I've done my fucking research. I know what 10 to 20 other successful people had to go through. And I'm stuck in the same thing. 
that's great. You know what I mean? Just, just you're not allowed to feel stuck or trapped or alone or whatever. Um, that's been the big benefit of this. We've seen for ourselves and other people is life gets exponentially harder, but it's like, you don't feel stuck. You don't feel alone. You don't feel trapped because you can, you can see your way through. And as observers, that's what means the most to us is, is not, we don't want to feel trapped, you know? Anyways, man, that's about it. Fucking, uh, uh, I'm glad that you finally came through. Uh, I, I've been wondering, I've been wanting to get to know you more. Um, you know, I jump in and jump out of your videos. Uh, you know, most of them are in French anyways. Uh, your English is perfect. Um, your typing abilities of self are fucking perfect. <laughs> and uh, so thanks so much for coming through. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much for a great video um, and getting to know you. Um, and yeah, man, just um, really think you're a cool guy and just really happy for you that you're 21 and you're, you're moving so fucking fast. Uh, that's just really great to see. That's just really cool, man. Um, that's it. Just happy emotions, positivity, FE, uh, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> All right, man. We'll be in touch. See ya. Hello. How's it going? All right. So I really want to be like, yep, got your type right. So we're done here. <laughs> I'll just blast, blast this shit. Um, first of all, like when you first came through, I was like, you know, it was at the time that we were getting so many ESFPs that were like, I'm an ENTP. No, I'm an ENTP. No, I'm an INTP. And I was just like, all right, here comes someone else that thinks they're an ENTP, but is probably an ESFP. So like, I absolutely, for the longest time, I just assumed, like every time you're e emailing us, I just assume you're probably an ESFP. <laughs> I was just like, okay, you know. Um, but opening up your videos, I was like, shit, <laughs> this is not an ESFP. Damn it. Um, so great job. Um, oh my God. And, and literally like it got to the point where as I'm listening to you, I'm like, uh, okay, hold on. What did he type himself exactly? And then I was like, okay, let me work backwards from how is this not double feminine NETI consume play sleep. And yeah. So let me just talk about, well, yeah, let, let's observer decider. So, you know, that seems to be pretty easy. Uh, you definitely do not seem to be stuck on the human game. Um, and it's not even that so much I'm like seeing the like, oh, my God, observer swings, although I'm sure you have them. I'm sure you could probably tell me stories, shit like that. But um, that wasn't like the biggest thing ever. And it was more than anything just not weird energy. It's really hard to explain to anyone that's not intuitive dominant like what we're talking about when it comes to energy. It seems like the intuitives have no problem being able to see this kind of stuff. Like if you say something like your vibe, your energy is is weird or off, like the those that are tracking patterns, like, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, especially double deciders. They're like, yeah, 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 I get it. So I feel like I can use that language with you just fine. But the the single deciders are very much like you open up the video and they're just weird. All of us are weird because they're very nervous that they're now talking to people and people are where the nervousness is. The double deciders, you, but they open up the camera and, and it's just, you're not seeing the weird energy. Like in some cases, and this is, you know, not obvious with you, I would say, but like what you usually see with the single observers is eventually you see that they're kind of like paranoid, paranoid, uh, anxiety, um, a little bit of crazy. Sometimes you're starting to see like just uh, like the freak out energy, like the just observer freak out energy. And it's not super prevalent, but it's definitely a very opposite energy of those that have the the weirdo decider vibe, like nervous, nervous, you know, I have to sit in my chair weird. Uh Oh, people are looking at me and I'm looking at them. And now I you know, people, oh my God, you know. Um, so yeah, you just have a very extremely calm, normal double decider vibe, which, you know, uh, is very pleasant to listen to. Um, but of course the single deciders are just absolutely batshit when they're doing their, their weird stuff. And that's where you'll catch them. But most of the time when we're watching these videos, it's just really easy to see double decider versus single decider. So, you know, there, you got that one. And yeah, absolutely DI. Oh my God, DI. That was very obvious. It was obvious to see that you're an EP and it's, it's hard to explain to people like, how do you know that? It's like, uh, you know, obviously a gatherer. And obviously like, hey, I'm going on um, my decision making and I don't need to check in. I'm just going to keep going. So it is interesting that eventually you came around to go, all right, what do you assholes think I am? You know, what do you guys think my type is? Um, 
I'm always curious as to like when the DIs eventually go, yeah, let me give, let me actually make sure I get the tribe's opinion um, eventually. Like that one I'm always curious on. Like what is the thing that tips it over? It almost feels like a bucket that gets like filled up over time. And especially for the double deciders, they're like, okay, I'm filling my DI bucket and I'm filling it and I'm filling it and I'm filling it. And oh, wait, oh shit, I haven't even checked in with the tribe to make sure I'm actually building my identity on something real. And yeah, I... I always get curious is like, was it a video that uh, probably, yeah, I would guess it's like some kind of video that we said that tipped it off to be like, hold on shit. I got to make sure that I'm not upside down and backwards. Uh, but either way, that that's always fascinating to me when the, when the DIs actually do check in. Cause a lot of like lead, you know, a lot of lead TIs um, will come straight to us because they want to be accurate, you know, especially like the ISTPs, they want to be accurate, you know? Anyways, that one's always fascinating to me. And then uh, the gathering becomes it's becoming more and more and more obvious as we watch the pattern of channel changing that one it's it's fuzzy it's really hard for people to see but like the more I practice using it the better I get at using that concept and yeah it's a thousand percent um pretty intense on those that are double activated OE especially the EPs um, especially masculine OE. So that's, that's definitely something that is easier to see. And of course, the thing that does make it a little muddier or harder to see is when you have like an IJ or a blaster EJ that is sleep last. So they're still like double activating their OE function. And of course, they're going to be a little bit more channel changey as well. So it's not cut and dry. It's not a, it's not a clean, easy cut and dry. You can use this all the time pattern but it is still a pattern that is very, very usable, very, very workable. And like, it's more one of those things where the more you watch somebody as they're doing the OE thing, as they're doing the channel changing thing, where you're like, okay, I'm finding my own self getting annoyed because I wanted to go deeper on that one topic. And we're on like five topics later, we've changed so many times. And I keep wanting to dive into one particular topic and I'm even getting like, oh my God, can we just land and really dive deeper on that one thing, please? Oh God, please. Like you're just watching your own reaction to going, okay, finally, I see you. We're not able to dive. We're not able to dive on any one particular topic. This is a channel changing story. And if you were to hear me, you know, God, it's like if Dave weren't editing some of my stuff on videos, you can hear me in like interviews where I'm just like channel changing, chasing the topics to try and give all of the, um, all of the variety. I want to chase this option. I want to chase that option to make sure I'm giving all of the information all at once. You know, that's what the desire of the OE is. So yeah, uh, from everyone on the outside, the OE, myself included, it gets really intense to have to chase someone else's random pattern of talking. Right. So that one's, uh, becoming easier and easier for us to follow. So this is where, this is where I was like, okay, I could see that in you. Even when in your emails, I was, I was seeing that from you. But like, I was surprised to see NT. But see, this week, we are really, really pulling apart our understanding of sensory versus intuition even more. So like, probably the last you've heard of us talking about sensing versus intuition is like the what versus the why. So watching people talk, it's very, very easy. Again, it's very easy to see SE at the top because it's just absolutely like, we're not talking about anything new at all. We're not talking about anything that isn't provable. I love this. I can't even like, <laughs> I can't even practice it. I love this computer. This computer is my favorite. Uh, you know, we went to the store and we got another computer and then we went and we, you know, it's like, you're just, you just, it feels like you're, <laughs> Like, this is the analogy that we we're talking about this week. It feels like you're watching a Dora the Explorer movie where or show where just like every single thing is like, what is that? What is that? That is a ball. Yay. I made you say the censor. <laughs> like just the, it, the so obvious of obvious of obvious of the sensory. So when you see it at the top, especially when it is masculine SE, like that is one of the easiest things to see in the world because it is so intense, right? But then there's other versions that get really watered down. So it's harder to use that one cut and dry, right? Because you could literally have, let's say a, let's say an ISTP, we'll pick on those again. So you have a TISE, but they're consume sleep. So they're immediately activating that NI. And a lot of them will feed you 
a lot of ni, especially if it's masculine. Let's say they're a double feminine ISTP. You'll hear a lot of masculine ni, and they'll be able to kind of pull the wool over your eyes because now they're able to use analogies, and they're doing just fine using analogies. So you have to play a chess game, and you have to catch them other places. You know, you're now having to catch them on is that oe or oi? Is that is that ni? Is what I'm hearing hearing a narrowing conceptual concept? You're now having to play chess to track them down. It's not easy. It's not as cut and dry. If you're just going after the concept of what versus why, or the details, the data, the things that have happened, 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 happened in the past for sensory versus analogies, leaving the planet, that kind of talk, right? So it's very easy to kind of go, well, that's great and all. If it's Sensory at the top, masculine versus intuition at the top, masculine, right? Because then you're comparing very clean versions of the thing. Well, what happens if it's watered down, right? So that becomes harder. So pulling apart the conceptual understanding of sensory versus intuition this week, our latest understanding, right? Because we always do the NI, so we're going deeper and deeper and deeper on the same concepts over and over and over again to try and um, really pull it apart even deeper. Why? Because here's the deal. If I truly believe that you're spitting out your functions every sentence, which I do, it's just a computer program. So I should be able to hack the computer program to understand it deeper. And, you know, even though <laughs> even though out in the real world, there's been there's been situations where I forget her name, but like some some lady, I, I think it's Elizabeth something or other. I forget. But like, I want to take one drop of blood and be able to pull out samples and testing from that one drop of blood. So conceptually, I should be able to pull out one sample and pull out so much from that one sample, whether it's a sentence, whether it's five minutes, how much can I truly understand by pulling apart the deeper understandings of a very short output of a human brain? You should be able to talk for five minutes and I should be able to pull out all of your parts or at least more of them than I am right now, because the only thing slowing me down is my own very slow human brain that is interpreting the information. So if I stop and I pause and I go over the concepts deeper, I should be able to get more because my version of sensing versus intuition back in the day was even lower than, oh, wait, it's just what versus why. And then unpacking that, it's like, yes, it's talking about what versus why, but it's actually talking about proof versus analogies and, and possibilities. Okay, so can I unpack that even more? And the understandings that we're getting to this week is like the concept of top down, which is intuition, or bottom up, which is sensing. So concepts seem to be like the way you guys talk, right? The way you guys talk, it seems to be that you are talking about the overview constantly stuck in the overview and therefore ignoring and not respecting and missing the details and the data and the back end information, right? You want to especially save your, uh, you know, intuition at the top. That's going to be the most purest form of it. Wanting to stay in the overview and just keep repeating the overview again and again and again without ever going to the examples, right? That's what intuition does. So you can see that in a five minute period of somebody talking, one minute less, if you get really good at the deeper full ownership of understanding the concept of what that really, really, really looks like, right? So what the savior sensories are doing is those of us that have savior sensory, it feels like we're starting in the middle of a sentence and we're just giving the data. We're like looking too close up. You know, let me give an example. Uh, I was listening to my son. See here, I'm doing it right now. Um, I was listening to my son and I was asking him, you know, I was talking to him over Skype because he's at his dad's house right now. I was talking to him over Skype and I asked him, hey, how's your Thanksgiving? And what I'm literally asking for is the conceptual understanding. What I want to hear from him is first, how's it going? Where did you do it at? Who's all there? How's, how did it go? I want to know the overview. I want to know the summary. I want to know the conceptual summary. Well, my son, being masculine savior, double activated SE, goes, we ate oranges and they were burnt a little bit and we had marshmallows and those were good. And I went, stop, stop. Don't give me the, 
<laughs> nope, nope. Do not start in the middle of the story with just ungodly amount of details before you give me the overview. It's like almost like dropping somebody in the middle of who knows where and you don't tell them what state they're in. You don't tell them what country they're in. You're just like, ready, go. And you're like, oh my God, where am I? Where's North? Where's South? Oh my God, that's what sensory feels like. You're just so in deeply ingrained in the sensory that you lose context. The context is missing. So when you start looking for this one category, sensing versus intuition, and you're looking for specifically that, you open up the video and you're like, okay, I'm expecting, if this guy's an ESFP, I should hear, and then we went here and the car was yellow and then the light turned green. And you're just like, oh my God, I just got dropped in the middle of nowhere. I have no idea what state, what country, what time of year, what's north, what's now. I have no idea where I'm at, what's the concept. Or, or, or I open up and I'm stuck in a constant conceptual overview and I'm lost on the planet. I have no idea. I, I can't see the planet at all. I'm just stuck in an overview. You're here in this country. Yay. You're here in this country. Yay. You're here in this country. Yay. Like there's no grounding. I never get to actually connect to the data. I never get to actually hear any examples. So I can't experience it for myself because I'm only hearing someone else's perspective on what the over is overview is from their from their own personal perception. So that's where intuition starts losing you. But it's beautiful because it's not tied down to the earth with all those details. But of course, like with everything, you need a balance, right? So I open up the video and I'm watching, I'm watching you talk with this new understanding of sensing versus intuition, right? I'm like expecting you to be an ESFP. And right away, I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting an overview. Okay, let me now be able to go, let me watch through. Let me, first thing I do, open it up, skip through. Cause I wanna see, am I gonna, am I gonna see a different person? Okay, you're, you're the same person throughout your video. That's good. Cause I don't wanna hear somebody who's tired and mopey that starts really amping up by the end. So I'm jumping through and I'm going, I'm still hearing the same conceptual overview an overview of this is what type I think I am. TIs do things like this. NEs do things like this. And I'm like, okay, let me see if I'm hearing something new. Let me hear if I, let me see if I'm actually going to eventually get to the data and the details. Even when you get to the end where you're showing me your whole spreadsheet, you're still giving me the overview the entire time. We don't get into the data. We don't get into the details. It's not that you can't do them, right? It's not that I can't use intuition. It's not that I'm not gonna give an overview. It's just the primary mode of communication for you is going to be stuck in overview and the primary mode of communication for me is gonna be stuck in example land, right? So now when you're going along in your life and you're like, why am I having a hard time connecting to the other people? Why can't they understand me? You're now going to be able to see a little bit more why. Why? Because if you're constantly giving an overview, no one can meet you there in that overview. Now they want to hear that overview because it's such a release. It's such an intense release of pressure. Hey, I dropped you at this place on earth. Here's where you're at. Here's where, here's where the whole big picture is. Here's north, here's south. And everyone is relieved. They're like, oh God, thank you so much. I now know where I'm at. Thank you for giving me context. Thank you for giving me the overview. I want to hear in a snapshot what your overview is. But then quickly after that, I want to start getting some actual real life examples. Start helping me connect what my experience is and the details that I go through on my day to day Help me connect that to what you are saying in your overview, especially you want, if you want to get information across. If you want to deliver your information, if you want somebody else to be able to understand your information, that's how you bridge that gap. Otherwise, if you're stuck in intuition land, you're high above the earth, you're in the clouds, and no one can actually reach you and meet you there. Now, if that's your goal, if you're like, I only want to talk to other intuitives, that's fine. But even then, other intuitives are like, I'm on a whole different other intuitive planet and I can't meet you where you're at. 
you're in space over here and I'm in space over there. So in order to communicate, in order to transfer information, you have to be able to deliver the details, the examples, the here's what it was like in physical reality with all of the silly little details. And first, what is so relieving is to get that overview. It's like overview is such a beautiful thing for bookends. I want to hear it in the beginning and I want to hear it in the end. I want to know what you're starting with. I want to know your starting point and I want to, I want to hear it again. I want to know, okay, conceptually, what did I just get taken through? Because I want some examples, but I want to know where I'm at on this planet as well. You know, so that's kind of what we're seeing this week as far as sensing intuition. I know I went way deep on that, but that would be the thing because for you, you are double activated on that any double activated. You've got a lot of it. It's masculine. So that's going to be the most like you're going to see it. It's going to be very conscious. It's going to be double activated and it's masculine. So your like usage of it and your love for it is going to be intense. And because it's so intense, you're going to naturally really disrespect that SI. Feminine, at the bottom, single activated. It will feel like you want it and desire it. And that's everyone's like subjective perspective. Of, but I love that function. I desire it. I want it. But like because the masculine double activated NE is so all encompassing, again, you know, the overview, the overview, I'm constantly giving overviews. It's so, so enticing and powerful. It's just going to smash that feminine SI, like just get out of the way, right? So, and really like you do you, you do whatever you want to do, right? That's obviously the case here, of course. But all I want to point out is like when you're running into struggles, when you're running into, oh my gosh, why aren't people understanding what I'm talking about? Or why, why am I missing this? Why is there a disconnect here? That's the first place I would look if I were you. That's it. That would be the, the flat, you know, the, the dash on your dashboard. That would just be the first place I would look. So, and you already know this because you know your type, but I'm just going over it because that's what I feel like talking about today. Um, and then, yeah, TI is easy. That's an easy one. And then again, like you have two functions at the top, double activated that are masculine. It's really going to just be going, obviously, I love these. And you're young too. So this is all like, of course, you love your saviors. You're young, you know, no big deal. But like when you start getting to the point where you're like, I'm not reaching goals that I wanted to reach in life. I'm missing some things that I wanted to actually have. It would be going and looking at those poor single activated demons that are feminine and going, okay, how do I do that? And, and just know that you're just still going to run to your saviors and that's okay. That's okay. Absolutely. Oh my God. All of us give ourselves patience, but it would be really recognizing you've got a, you've got a harder, you've got a harder task because you have such beautiful, uh, masculine saviors at the top. You are going to have a harder task into actually going, okay. What are those stupid demons that I don't respect that I don't want to have to put time into? That would just be the thing. But either way, my friend, overview versus examples. And then also um, thinking. Thinking is just, I mean, you know what thinking is. It's just block banging. It's just banging on the blocks, figuring out stuff um, and not genuinely using emotion while you're talking. So that would be another thing to kind of put some coins into. Um, it's not going to be the hardest thing for you in the world just because, you know, yes, you, you do have double activated masculine TI, but because you are consume play, you are hitting that FE quickly. It's just not going to be the worst, hardest thing in the world. You know, you're going to be able to, um, enjoy the tribe just fine. Like I, I love, I love your laughter. Like you have such a good FE laugh. Like it's beautiful. It's fun. And that laugh is what will make people feel very at ease around you and get to enjoy your show. And I would absolutely say the more that you can bring out that part of yourself, like your show is going to get even more powerful because you're sharing more emotion with people, relating to them, giving them like just literally laughing and even showing frustrations, you know? That kind of sharing of emotion is really, really, really connective to people. So the S and the F, you know, that's why like all these ESFPs are dominating doing YouTube and stuff like that because they just get that people need to meet you in experience land because that's how they're going to learn. I want to be able to learn with the experiences, sensory example experiences, plus people, all humans. I don't care if you're savior, demon feeling. Everyone connects with emotion, and that one's going to be a really big one to use consistently over time, especially when it comes to doing a show. You're doing a show. You need a lot of SF to do a show. You're going to have to show emotion, and you're going to have to give 
very specific examples instead of just hitting the overview and continuously hitting the overview and continuously hitting the overview. If people are not getting it in sensory, if you're not giving enough examples in sensory, it just goes over people's heads, even if they're saved your intuition. Gotta be able to use the sensory so that people can meet you where you're at. All right, buddy. Hey, great job. You're, you're young and you have like, like you're already getting started, like huge, massively. Like I, I don't, I don't not see amazing things for you in your future because you're just, you're young and you seem like you just want to get moving. Like, let's get going. Let's start. So that's great. I think that's all really great. Honestly, such a great job typing yourself. Oh my gosh. Really, really good job. Um, it seems like these, it seems like your type, like we've had a couple of people, your type or close to your type, like T-I-N-E, consume, place sleep, that can see themselves really well. And they seem to have a harder time typing other people, and that's okay, like, you'll figure it out. But it's it's really, like, if you can see yourself, that's good. Start seeing yourself every five minutes, and that will really help you be able to type others, you know, even better. All right, pal, uh, um, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.